Uh, we already heard a little bit about the future of gaming and about controls and what these guys do is they make when they use computer, the brain computer interfaces and biofeedback bio -feedback to make games you can control with your mind. Looking forward to this. Thank you. Hi, we're doing the Danu, uh, Jan Jong, for the personal remake games to be used with brain computer interfaces, ECIs. These are essentially headsets you can put on your head and you can play games with your thoughts and your emotions. Uh, this is a very simple neural headset from NeuroSky. It uses a single sensor placed on the forehead and this essentially works as a game controller. Uh, but instead of just using your hands, you're using your mind. So you're sitting still and you're focusing your thoughts, be it your concentration or your emotions. <laughs> now, potentially, this kind of new technology is very promising. Uh, with this kind of technology, we can control feelings of stress and anxiety, we can direct our thoughts, and this opens up a completely new playground of, of completely new experiences for us to explore. Uh, BCI works by reading very tiny electrical signals coming from your brain. And it's read through these very small sensors that are mounted all over your head. It's a headset from Emotive. And we can actually get a lot of data out of these devices. But even though we can get a lot of data, we're still taking baby steps. We're still trying to figure out how to make sense of all this information and, and figure out how to make this fun. Uh, what is playful? What, what, how is this going to make us happy? Because this kind of uh, technology is, is not uh, used, uh, it is not created to make to, to play games with, it's completely new. Uh, but we have to figure out how we're going to use this in games. How is this going to be fun? And what kind of use is going to stick in the end? Yeah, so how are we actually going to use this in games? Well, we can easily read if the player is very excited or calm and relaxed. And we can feedback this data back to the player so they can try and understand and actually control these states. If we uh, adapt these states in game, and we can create a control method for a player. In this game, uh, the player is asked to remain calm. If he's remained calm for a few seconds, the ball will blink and then it will split into two objects. So remaining calm really has become a control method for this player. Um, doing so actually provides a number of things, but one very important thing is that it actually creates a very personal connection between the game and the player. Um, gaining feedback, and even in games which seem to have a very straightforward gameplay, this can happen. Um, another side effect of using this sort of gameplay is that players actually train themselves to be relaxed. They get feedback on, on their states and actually can try to influence these and use these experiences in everyday life. Um, another thing we do with BCI is actually try to get rid of the easy, medium and hard choices. Uh, if I play a game on easy mode, it's still going to be easier for me than it's going to be for my grandmother on easy mode. So, we want to create a true dynamic difficulty just by reading your stats. Uh, some games already try this by, oh, bad picture, but, um, by having the player lose and see this as a checkpoint. The player does it very bad, so we're going to make things easier. We actually want to change things while the player is gaming. Uh, we can do this with, very easily by reading how frustrated or, or stressed the player is, and, uh, but also if a player is very bored with this. If this happens, we can actually change elements inside a game to try to influence these same statistics with the player. Um, we did this in a game trying to see what kind of elements we could use for this um, and try to create a difficulty which actually uh, totally customizes to the player's needs personally. That's about it. <laughs> but wait, there's more! <laughs> your thoughts as a way to direct your actions using the force. This is also possible. Why? How? Because doing something and imagining to do something like grabbing works the same for your brain. It's the same kind of brain activity. Uh, but the system, the BCI system, doesn't necessarily recognize your thoughts. Like the dog, we have to train it to react to recognized thoughts. Uh, so we can use these thoughts in-game. Uh, but we also have to train ourselves. Uh, because it's very hard to have the same consistent thought over and over again. We have to use tools like the baby that are going to enable us to grow in this kind of remorse of running. So we have to stimulate memory and learning by using things as sounds and sights, imagery, to, uh, to stimulate us. I used this in a project where uh, uh, the player could train uh, conscious cognitive commands using sound and could actually gather these floating particles you see here and energize them 
by training sound together with a consistent thought. And after a few training sessions, the player was actually able to just imagine this sound and interact with the world around him. He actually drawing in a memory pattern which enables him to perform that action. Uh, and through this method, the player learns how to strengthen his thoughts and actually create a stronger mind to direct his thoughts. Uh, we were Dreams of Danu. This was a short introduction of what we do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a nice day. Uh, yeah, I was looking at uh, all the interface uh, of the work that you are making at the moment. And I was thinking, uh, would, are we going to see games that work the other way around? Uh, I was thinking about the people that are in a depression, for example, make them play a game which for them is a playful experience, but for their brain is like an antidepressant. Um, yeah, to a certain extent that can't. Um, we also uh, talking with um, therapy centers that already use EEG uh, to try and um, uh, get reactions out of the player by providing them feedback. Um, it's really hard to, to um, even if you're depressed, somebody else can be depressed with totally different reasons. So um, those kind of things are really hard. Probably in the future we can, but. Uh, those kind of things are really uh, in the baby steps uh, at the moment. Yeah. Thank you. Any questions from the crowd? Yes. Everybody else says. Um, <laughs> off these controllers, are you getting a single discrete value like a button press? Are you getting one continuous signal like a paddle, or is it multiple dimensions? Uh, it differs on which kind of readings you want to read. If it's like the effective states I talked about with your emotions, it's uh, a continuously like variable about how frustrated you are, how stressed you are. Um, but like in the cognitive, we really have to uh, let the system recognize that you are thinking of a certain thought, and then it's more like a button press. Thank you very much. Woo!